Make them laugh, make them laugh, sang Donald O'Connor in Singing in the Rain. Don't you know everyone wants to laugh? And he shrewdly added, now you could study Shakespeare and be quite elite, and you can charm the critics and have nothing to eat. Because however much everyone loves this genre, for reviewers it's almost never critically cool to admire any comedy at the time. You have to wait until years or decades have gone by. Comedy finds that no matter how adored its practitioners, somehow it is ineligible for greatness. Comedy is always the bridesmaid and never the bride, especially at Oscar time. Perhaps it is because comedy is a genetic link to cinema's humblest, rudimentary forebears, akin to the music hall or the circus or fairground tent. Charlie Chaplin was one of cinema's earliest international megastars, his Tramp, a recognised brand all over the world. Chaplin appreciated cinema's visual grammar, quite distinct from theatrical stagecraft, and saw how it could be used to construct that conceptual novelty, the sight gag. In a famous example from the idle class of 1921, he receives a letter from his wife, which intimates that his heavy drinking is ruining their marriage. Chaplin turns away from the camera, becomes quite still, and slumps over, and his shoulders begin to shake. He is apparently sobbing with shock and remorse, but then he turns around and shows he is mixing up a cocktail. Watch the whole sequence on YouTube and you will see the clarity and care with which Chaplin has concealed the existence of the drinks tray behind him until the cocktail shaker reveal. Keaton, the Marx Brothers, W.C. Fields and Laurel and Hardy produce great and in fact pioneering works of filmmaking, perhaps more cherished now than they were at the time. The screwball comedy tradition in Hollywood took the genre in a more obviously elegant direction with classics like Bringing Up Baby and Sullivan's Travels. The French had Jacques Tati, whose memory has been lovingly revived in Sylvain Chaumet's The Illusionist. And in Britain, we would have the great Ealing classics, of which the greatest, in my view, is Robert Hamer's incomparably dark and cynical Kind Hearts and Coronets, the greatest serial killer film in history. Billy Wilder's Some Like It Hot is one of the most loved films of all time. The wacky, cross-dressing comedy of two hapless 1920s jazzmen, played by Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon, who accidentally witness a mob hit and have to disguise themselves as women in an all-girl band, where they are dazzled by dizzy blonde Marilyn Monroe. Having posed as a woman, Curtis must then pose as a rich, sophisticated man to impress Monroe, bragging about his love of water polo. Isn't that terribly dangerous? asks Monroe, to which Curtis replies, I'll say. I had two ponies drown under me. Some Like It Hot is a remake of a German film, itself a remake of a French film, and it's an example of the unacknowledged European roots of Hollywood Americana. Bob Hope and his potent, wisecracking personality was a comic persona replicated by Woody Allen in his own sensational career, and Allen found a way to translate his stand-up comics observational style into a personal, quasi-autobiographical style of movie making. His love and death, with its Tolstoyan musings on fate, faith and destiny, was a precursor to his quasi-serious filmmaking of the 70s and 80s, his fascination with Bergman and Fellini. Something of the spirit of Allen's Annie Hall has resurfaced in that much degraded vehicle, the romantic comedy, or rom-com, the best example of which is probably Nora Ephron's When Harry Met Sally. The inheritor of Allen's intellectualism, melancholy and Weltschmerz is probably screenwriter Charlie Kaufman, whose Being John Malkovich had the spirit of an Allen short story, and whose Synecdoche New York is one of the most remarkable films of the new century. There has been a resurgence of unserious, straight comedy, comedy which is without pretension, comedy, in fact, which does not aspire to resemble a Coen Brothers movie, great though the Coens are. This kind of funny film, which tips a wink to the connoisseur, has been revived in Britain with the movies of Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, with Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, and the spoof adventures of Sasha Baron Cohen, whose characters Borat and Bruno caused a sensation with their situationist anarchy. Most prominently of all, there is the work of Judd Apatow, Adam Mackay, and the new frat pack generation of Will Ferrell et al. I personally believe that Ferrell's Tuna v. Lyons dialogue in Mackay's film The Other Guys will one day be recognised for what it is, pure comedy gold. Dying is easy, comedy is hard, runs the old saying, 
A tragedian can't expect to hear bursts of sobbing in the auditorium. And creators of bittersweet indie dramas can't expect to hear bursts of sighing and rueful nodding. But comic filmmakers want to hear laughs. And when these are not forthcoming, they feel, they know, that they have failed. Comedy, that cruelly hard discipline, deserves respect.